Blessed morning. No competition, how do you win every day? Going hard, living big, just like a star. You can't get it, already got it. And there ain't nothing no one can do about it. Cause we live in that. We live in that. We live in that. You on a mission. Since you were a kid. Okay, I'm gonna stop. I'ma tell you something. I hope you're listening. Life gets better when Jesus is your friend. He gave you no competition. Has you been every day? Okay. Last morning, everyone. It's um, a little overcast out. A little dark out for some reason. Nevertheless, we are here, and I'm back home. And thanks for all of the prayers. Thanks for all of the well wishes. It was a wonderful and blessed time. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Everyone wants to live a life of enjoyment. Everyone wants to live a life of health. Everyone wants to live a life of peace. But no one has figured out how until now. The answer is simple. Alignment is key. Alignment is key to living a life of enjoyment. Alignment is key to living a life of health. Alignment is key to living a life of peace. And when I speak of the word alignment, I'm referring to your spirit, your mind, and your body, all working harmoniously towards the progression of who you, 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 and you were created to be. I am Janice Green, your spirit, mind, and body strategist, and I invite you to take a walk with me along the spiritual journey I call life so that together we get to rediscover who we truly are spiritually, mentally, and physically. We're going to go ahead and bow our heads for prayer. Father God, I thank you so very much for this opportunity to be used by you. Father God, I ask that you increase while I decrease. Father God, allow your Holy Spirit to have his way. I ask that you allow your Holy Spirit to take permanent residency within me from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. Father God, I ask you to guide my every thought, my every word, and my every move. Allow all that I do be pleasing in your sight, Father God. I ask you to bless each person who pops on, who logs on, who watches the replay. Father God, meet them right where they are. Father God, give them all that they need so that they can become all that you, Father God, have ordained them to become. Father God, I ask you to bless and to prosper each person with excellent health, abundant wealth, and unspeakable joy. Father God, I ask that you remove anything from this atmosphere that is not of you. Father God, fill it with all of you. Father God, I ask these blessings in your darling son Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, it's been a great one, a great one so far. So let's go ahead and say our foundational scripture, which comes from Romans chapter 12, verse 2, and it reads thusly. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. That, ca that came from Romans chapter 12, verse 2. A couple of weeks back, we talked about relationships being your most prized possession. We also talked about that of the relationships, the most critical one is the one that you have with yourself. And we know that in order for us to find out who we truly are, I mean, truly are, we have to first form that relationship with our Father God. And we do that through reading his word. So we're still going to talk about the relationships and how valuable they are to us. On today, we're going to briefly talk about our relationship with our mind. Oftentimes, we 
we neglect we neglect that relationship because we can't see our minds we cannot touch our minds and oftentimes we feel as if we cannot control our minds and to a certain degree those are true however hopefully after today you have a different perspective on your relationship with your particular mind there is only one mind and that is the mind of God and everything not some things not a few things not half of the things but everything was created from that one mind and that one mind is the mind of God and whenever you see your mind as being a part of his mind it becomes a little less cumbersome for us to to navigate it before we get into the strategies of how to access your mental treasure let's let's kind of build some background information um you know my three areas or my three addictions spirit mind and body and i didn't know i was so infatuated with the mind until after you know, I started digging a little bit deeper. Um, briefly, I know a house divided cannot stand. I do know that. There is only one mind, and that is the mind of God. However, our physical mind consists of two parts. It is the conscious part and the unconscious part. The conscious part is the part to where we have free will. We get to choose what it is we want to think. We get to choose what it is we want to do. We get to choose a lot of a lot of the things with that aspect of our mind but that unconscious mind that 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 doesn't belong to us to a degree that's all of the involuntary body bodily functions that we have that's when that's the aspect of your mind that controls the blood that's flowing that's the aspect of your mind that controls your breathing your heartbeat your systems and their regulations and your ability to safeguard yourself from any harm. All of that is your subconscious mind. So you have your conscious and you have your subconscious mind. And research states that our conscious mind, that's the thinking, the analyzing, and the planning aspect of our lives, we only use about 10% of that. And if we only use 10% of our conscious mind, then the majority of our mind which is the subconscious is what controls the majority of our lives and oftentimes individuals want to make change and they change from the outside in and it doesn't happen that way you have to go from the inside out and then you know Romans 12 and 2 remind us to be transformed by the renewing of our minds and if we want to transform anything we have to renew our minds which leads me to today's strategies. In order to access that mental treasure, and the reason why I call it a treasure is because of that, that huge chunk, that 90% of how we see our lives, how we see ourselves, how we see the world, how we, how we perceive everything is a subconscious mind. That is the mind of God. That is the mind that we cannot control to a degree. But that is also the part that determines what we see outside of ourselves. So the first thing that you want to do, well, the first question that you want to ask yourself whenever you're trying to access that mental treasure, whenever you're trying to transform your life from the inside out, the first question you want to ask yourself is who is responsible for my thinking and oftentimes if you think about it we tend to blame other individuals we tend to blame other things we tend to blame other systems but ultimately we are responsible for our thinking and once you're able to get to that part of the realization of how much control you have over your life then you're you're halfway there Whenever you take responsibility for your life and you put the control back in your hands and you take it from externals, then and only then can you begin to see change occur or, in this instance, transformation. 
So for a long time, I always blame other things, always blame other people for how I felt my life was going or how I felt my life should be going. And I didn't ultimately take responsibility. But once I learned how valuable that the mind is, then I was able to make some permanent changes and not some temporary adjustments. So after you take responsibility, the second question that you want to ask yourself is, what is it I'm thinking? What am I thinking? And this one is a big one because this question is simply asking or ensuring, ensuring that you are aware of what your thoughts are. You can't change what you don't know. Awareness is the gateway to permanent transformation. And that's kind of worth repeating. Awareness is the gateway to permanent transformation. If you don't know that you don't know, then nothing is going to change. Everything is going to remain the same. So once you know what you know, then and only then can you change it. And when you decide, okay, it's time for me to sit with myself and look at, think about, write out, see what it is I'm thinking, then and only then can you begin the transformation. And then that third question is, why am I thinking the thoughts that I think? And and this is something that, you know, within the last, what, five, six years that I, that I learned through research is that the first seven years, some research says, and, you know, the verdict is still out on that. However, some research states that the first seven years of your life dictates the person that you will become. It determines the life you will live. It determines your mindset. It sets in place your perception and perspective of life. And when I first read that, I was like, hmm, it felt true, but it didn't feel permanent. It felt like, okay, yes, it could be true, but I still feel like I could change this. This is not permanent. This doesn't have to stay the exact same way. And when you go back to God's word, he reveals to you a lot of the things that you need to know about your mind. And to a degree that is true. And you're more than likely saying, well, I can't control the first seven years of my life. I'm, I'm only an infant and then a toddler. How am I supposed to know what I'm supposed to think? And I can't control the environment. I can't control the people. I can't control anything that I see the first seven. You are absolutely correct. All of those things are correct. However, it is somewhat incumbent upon your parents to ensure that that environment is um, one that is conducive to a productive um, life. However, when you go of age, and you know, seven is that age in which we become responsible and accountable for our own actions. But even after, in your 40s, 50s, however old you are, you can still make that change only if you take responsibility, only if you know what it is you're thinking, only if you know what it is you want to change. That subconscious mind controls 90% of our lives. And in order for us to transform, to transform, I'm talking kind of fast, in order for us, slow down, in order for us to transform anything that we see outside of ourselves, we're going to have to start with our thinking, especially if we want it to be permanent. And in order to do that, you're going to have to reprogram that subconscious mind, particularly those aspects of your life that you would like to see improve. And you do that by repetition. And that, that aspect of it is going to be a whole nother, whole nother show. But you want to make sure that you understand whenever you're dealing with the subconscious mind, that's the mind that operates involuntarily. It operates without you having to think about it. And that also is that part of your mind where God resides. Whenever you wake up in the morning, that's 
God waking you up. Whenever your blood is flowing and you don't have to remember, oh, I got to turn my blood on. I have to turn it off. Breathing on, breathing off. All of that is regulated by your subconscious mind. And that subconscious mind, which controls 90% of everything that we do, is the most powerful part. And once we get in and sync, with how it works, then and only then can we have that transformation that we so ever seek. The mind is uh, hmm, it's quite complex, but it is understandable. And you're going to have to do some of your own research because whenever you delve into the mind, you, you can go to distances that you cannot return from. So um, I'm going to kind of stop right there, but make sure that you, one, take responsibility for your thoughts. You and only you are responsible for the things that you are thinking. You and only you control what you think about and what you do. Remember, God has given us free will, and that is our choice to think those thoughts. It's no one else. It's just you. You're responsible for your thoughts. The second question that you want to ask yourself is what it is that I'm thinking. You have to be aware of your thoughts. If you're totally oblivious to the things that you're thinking, then you're not going to be able to make that transformation that you so ever desire. And once you're aware that, hey, my thinking dictates the life that I live, my thinking determines where I go, then and only then will you be able to make that transformation? And that third one, why am I thinking the thoughts that I have? And most of those are thoughts that are that were conditioned, that were given to you from, the, um, from your first breath until the age of seven. And we just continue to allow that conditioning to take place. And when you know better or when you know different, you do better and you do differently. You behave differently. And I think it was Aristotle who stated, um, you give me a child at the age of seven and I will show you the man. So that's, that, that's, that quote in and of itself is quite powerful. But so is your mind. So is your mind. So good morning, Blake. How are you? Thank you for joining. Good morning, Mary. Jakari, how are you, my dear? It's so good seeing you all on today. Today was a very, very early day. I wanted to kind of sleep in myself. But I do want to um, kind of give you some tips on if those of you who are going to, you know, take a vacation to make sure you take um, any vitamins, any minerals, any herbs that you're taking, make sure that you bring them with you so that you can continue to um, build your immune system along the way. Um, obviously, take your um, Lysol or your disinfectant spray so that you could like reclean the room or the surfaces that you're in because that's going to maintain your health as well. You want to make sure you take masks. Um, the majority, if not all, of the um, hotels require you to have a mask, and you know there will be someone there that says, "Hey, where's your mask?" But you know we had ours. Take the, I would say you can take the cloth ones, but take the ones that you can throw away so that when you come back into your room, you could um, toss that before you enter. And then you can put on a fresh one every time that you go. Um, yeah, life, life is, 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 is trying to, to become alive, but you know, there's still some, some areas where you see that things are different. And different doesn't mean bad. Different just means it's different. It's, it's all in your perspective and perception of things. Um, your medicine, food. Make sure some, very few, maybe one or two restaurants allow individuals to come in and to sit and to dine. Um, that's something for you to decide. But you want to make sure that you... Um, if you're ordering food, you want to make sure that it is prepared when you order it and not food that is sitting out because that's not very um, sanitary. So uh, make sure that you go into a restaurant and you order your food, but just make sure you have time to kind of sit and wait until until that food is prepared. The majority of the food we did take back to the room or we ate in the car. So um, 
but yeah those are some tips and I think that is basically it the food um make sure that you have lots and lots and lots and lots of water so that you can stay um, hydrated your medicine your spray um, some people you know even use Clorox and right before you get ready to pack to come back home make sure you throw away all of your toothbrushes throw away any sh you know plastic shower caps that you have um, your shower shoes all of that goes in the trash any soap that goes in the trash anything that you know you use during that stay that doesn't have like a closed container you, you throw that away so that you don't bring any anything that's not friendly back into your home and make sure that you do have a separate container a separate bag for all of your dirty clothes so that when you come home you can put that bag in your washroom and then you can wash all of that goodness away so with that being said um recap make sure you um, spend time on learning how to access your mental treasure that is how you begin to make permanent transformation in your life your thoughts are definitely things and your thinking does dictate where you go in life and how far you go in life so the three questions you need to ask yourself who's responsible for my thinking question number two what am i thinking and third question why am i thinking this so without further ado i'm going to bid you all a wonderful saturday hopefully the sun will come out and if not you make your own sunshine all right with that being said remember life is a gift that keeps on giving and every opportunity that you are given to open your eyes and visualize the life you desire to see and you do this by keeping your spirit aligned with the one and true spirit which is god you do this by keeping your mind stayed on things that are good and you do this by keeping your body in a constant consistent conscious groove Remember to love the person in front of you. Remember to love the person behind you. Remember to love the person to the left of you. Remember to love the person to the right of you. And know that I love each and every one of you. I'm so grateful, grateful, grateful for your time. I know the sacrifice that you make on these Saturdays. And I know you want to sleep in. I'm going to sleep in sometime too. But God calls. And I, I thank you, and I'm grateful for each and every one of you. Remember to spend some time in nature. Allow that cosmic exchange to take place. You breathe in the oxygen, and you let go of that other not-so-good gas. So, with that being said, goodbye. See you guys later.